Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Rosemary and in today's video I'm kicking off my dollar dupes of high-end retail stores starting with Restoration Hardware. I'd like to begin with this hammered brass bowl with a unique raw edge. I thought that was interesting but at $267 for a small bowl I wanted to see how close I could come making a dollar dupe version. To make, I took a recycled Ozoka water bottle I had on hand and using a utility knife, I cut off the top third of the bottle. The shape of this bottle is actually not the best for use in this dupe. However, if you happen to have a Dollar Tree soda bottle or something similar, I think that would be the perfect shape and size. I was going to cut off the bottle top and cap, but since I'm already diverging from the original in shape, I decided to keep them to create a stand for the bowl and create some additional flair. To create that raw edge look, I used scissors to cut jagged pieces into the plastic. Next, I used the tip of my hot glue gun to melt any sharp edges and round out corners. Once I had the base for my bowl, I took some Dollar Tree caulk and applied it in strips around the outside surface. To spread the caulk around the surface of the bowl, I dip my fingers in some water, and that's really the key. As long as you keep your fingers wet, you're going to get great spreadability, and we will minimize that mess. Then once I had a fairly even coat, I set the bowl aside for about 30 minutes to let the caulk dry a little bit. Then once the caulk was a little more firm, I began making indents into the caulk with the end of a paintbrush. Dipping the paintbrush end in water as you go will help to keep the paintbrush from sticking as well as re-moisten any spots in the caulk which may have dried up. Once the bowl was covered in all those little indents, I set it aside to fully dry. To make extra certain, I let it dry overnight. And then here it is the next day. Now, the Restoration Hardware Bowl has a brass finish, but I'm going to actually give this a coat of gold spray paint, as I find the actual brass spray paints have more of a silver undertone for some reason, and I definitely want those more warm golden hues. But yes, it is going to give me that bright, shiny finish, so to tone that down a bit, I'm going to use some Waverly Antique Wax. As I applied the wax, I made sure to get down into all the little indents, but then went back with a paper towel and wiped off the edges. I again used the wax for the interior of the bowl, painting on with a brush, but then using a paper towel to blot the wax and create more of like a textured finish. And then here it is compared with the original. It does have that different shape, and I may have gone a little hard on the indenting and the antique wax, but I'm loving my favorite part of the original, which is that raw edge look. I love how that came out, and I think that retaining the bottle cap and top to create the stand type bottom definitely adds some interest. But if you favor the shape of the original, the DT soda bottle with the top cut off is definitely gonna get you a very close match. Let me know in the comments what you think. For the next project, I'm going to do a smaller version of the Restoration Hardware Porto Teak Round Solar Lantern. Now, this lantern is rather large at 10 and a half inches wide by 25 inches tall, but wow, $587? Yikes. For the Dollar Dupe version, I'll be making a smaller scale lantern with craft wood rounds and 12 inch dowels. But at the end of this project, I'll share a larger scale lantern I made using Dollar Tree long barbecue skewers, which stands 31 inches tall and is actually larger than the Restoration Hardware lantern. To assemble, I'll simply attach the dowels to the wood round using both wood glue and a little hot glue for an immediate hold. However, it is very important that you use mostly wood glue. As you can see, I'm applying wood glue there at the bottom of the dowel, and then I leave a small space at the bottom for hot glue. I'll then attach the dowel to the wood round and hold in place until the hot glue sets. It is also important that the edge of the dowel lines up flush with the bottom of the wood round. To ensure proper spacing between the dowels, you can use a dowel without any glue to hold the space, then apply a glued dowel, and again hold in place until the hot glue sets. Once I had all the dowels in place, I allowed the wood glue to set up for a few hours, then I went back with a utility knife just to clean up any of the excess glue. After that, I set the lantern aside for the glue to set up fully overnight. The next day, I did decide to go ahead and stain the lantern with some Varathane stain in the color Golden Pecan. As for the lantern lid, I used another wood round, and since this is a solar lantern, a solar light. 
since the solar panel at the top needs to be exposed to the light, I had to drill a hole in the round. But since I couldn't find my whole drill bits, my wonderful neighbor Dennis did it for me. Now all I need to do is take the solar light, undo the top, and glue it in the lid. To attach the lid to the lantern, I took a stretchy headband and placed that around the lid. I also placed a strip of Type-On glue above the band, making sure not to get any glue on or under the headband. From there, I placed the lid on my work surface and secured the lantern on top, moving the dowels to the side so that they slid down around the side of the wood round top. Then I pulled the headband over the top of the dowels and pushed the lid down so that it was flush with the ends of the dowels. I then adjusted the dowels to ensure that they were correctly spaced. To further secure, I pulled each dowel slightly forward and added a little more glue in behind. Lastly, I just cleared up any excess glue, then set the lantern aside for the glue to fully cure. And then here is the comparison between the original and the dollar dupe. But like I mentioned, the dollar dupe lantern is more than half the size. Now, if you wanted to scale this lantern to size, you could do so with larger wood rounds and longer dowels. Alternately, here is a similar lantern that I made in my next level solar hacks video. It stands almost three foot tall and gives off some great light with patterns. I can link the video in the description if you'd like to check it out. For the next project, I'll be creating a dollar dupe of these travertine stone pillars, restoration hardware refers to as plinths. These are large three and a half to almost four foot solid stone pillars, and I'll be creating a faux travertine finish on much smaller pieces of wood. However, this finish can be easily replicated on larger pieces similar to the size of these. So I'm going to start with a couple of pieces of scrap two by fours that have been sitting in my backyard, so they're pretty weather worn. That's okay since I'll be painting them anyway, and to get more of a stone look, I'll use my favorite spackle paint, which is a one to one mix of spackle and chalk paint. I really like the Dollar Tree brand, and I'm going to mix it with some Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. Next, I'll give the wood pieces two coats each with the paint. To create the faux finish, I'll be using glaze medium along with four other paint colors and a couple of basic tools. For the first layer, I'll be painting with one part each Waverly chalk paint in the color sandstone, one part glaze medium, and one part water. To apply, I'll use a piece of a scrunched up plastic grocery store bag, and I'll just pounce that on the surface of the wood. The idea is to create a cloud-like translucent overlay on top of the base coat so that variations of both the plaster and sandstone colors can be seen. It's very subtle, but we will be building up on these subtle variations to get the depth and definition to mimic a travertine look. While that was drying, I mixed the next color, Waverly's Hazelnut Chalk Paint, and again, the mix will be one part paint, one part glaze, but I want it to make this layer a little bit thinner, so I went ahead and added two parts of water. To apply this coat, I used a Dollar Tree chip brush, and even though I want it to paint to be very thin, I still wanted very little of the paint on the brush, so I dabbed a good portion of it off, then streaked the brush across the surface. I then took a second chip brush, which was dry without any paint on it, and used that to blend and soften the streaks. For the next color, I used Waverly chalk paint in the color truffle. And what I did here was I used a little dab of the paint to blend it in with the thinned hazelnut to darken that up a little bit. I again used the chip brush to streak on the darkened glaze mix, but this time I took a cut piece of poster board, or you could use a business card or a gift card here. And the idea is to kind of coax the glaze into veins as well as create kind of swirl-like patterns that are found in travertine, especially the cuts present in the restoration hardware pillars. Next, I took the shading a little darker and added a little Waverly elephant colored paint to the mix. I again used the chip brush to apply, but just kind of pounced it in a few areas using the picture from the RH originals for guidance, then used the card to again create the veining and swirling in the pattern. The last step is to create the speckling. And to do that, I mix the elephant and truffle together. And I do want this paint to be a little thin, so I got some of that extra thin hazelnut and mixed that in. 
I again use the chip brush, making sure to dab off the excess, then use the second brush as its surface to tap the loaded brush on, creating boatloads of speckles all over the surface. Now you may be saying, Rosemary, stop, you're ruining it. Too many speckles. Don't worry, since I'm now going to go back and remove most of them. Now you may be saying, well, why would you do that? And the reason is twofold. First, the speckling on natural travertine, like what the RH pillars are made of, occur in very specific patterns and clusters, which is hard to emulate unless you do the hand dotting method, but then it loses that kind of sporadic natural speckling. But by doing copious amounts of freeform splatter, then going back and removing the excess, I can shape the speckles into the desired patterns and clusters. Plus, when you remove the excess speckles, you get the added bonus of creating those kind of translucent bubbles that are also present in travertine. Yay, you gotta love a twofer. And then the final step was to give the pillars a couple of coats of this polyurethane in a satin finish. And then here is the comparison with the original. And yes, these are not the same scale, but as mentioned earlier, you can easily make pillars comparable in size and use this method to create a faux travertine finish. I'm even thinking you can just glue four two by fours together to create the larger pillars. But I think these smaller ones also look great on a shelf or console table, top with a couple of succulents for a great RH vibe on a DT budget. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to give a big thumbs up and be on the lookout for the next high-end dollar dupe video, or better yet, subscribe and hit that notification so you are alerted as soon as the next one is published. In the meantime, check out these great dupes here. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you next time.